My name is Jamie. And I am Benjamin. And, and together, together, we are from, from the Customer, customer Relations, Relations Department. Department. It is our pleasure to welcome and thank you for joining us on this special day. We have a full lineup of events planned and we hope you are looking forward to it just as much as we are for this open house. Before we get started, here are some ground rules so that everyone can have a pleasant session together. We would like to ask everyone to refrain from using any strong language in the comment section below and be respectful towards one another and other viewers alike. Stay towards the end of this introduction for our open house application fee waiver that can be applied to all our short courses and learn about the many other bundles we have specially prepared for this open house. For the rest of the day, we have talks from our trainers who will be sharing about our courses and their experience as leading industry professionals. Our program advisors will also be joining us to talk about the many government funding schemes available and enrollment eligibilities. Part of life after TEF TC includes a very exciting upcoming partnership with universities all over the world, namely University of Arts London, Kingston University and many more. If furthering your education is not your cup of tea, we'll have a sneak peek from industry partners giving you a glimpse into how working in the fashion industry is like. And now for the part we've all been waiting for, our quote for this year's open house, OHMAR2022. This quote can be used for any of our short courses during enrollment to waive off the application fee. Again, that is OHMAR2022. First up, we have Doreen and Thomas sharing with us more on our apparel design courses. Hi, welcome to the Fashion Open House. My name is Thomas Tan. I'm a full-time trainer here at TFTC. I was trained in uh, locally as a fashion designer. After that, I worked for a local brand. And uh, after a few years, I went to work for a factory. So working for a factory, I get to travel to various different uh, production places to really let me understand how things, uh, clothes are being made. And also I get to travel to Europe and US to work with uh, designers and buyers. So I really got to know the process of mass production yep. that happens at the back. So with me is uh, Doreen. I have been in this industry for three over decades. I used to work in the international buying office, so I travel a lot all around the world. So I think that it's very interesting to see how our industry works in different countries, uh, from the fibres to the textile mills, to the garment manufacturers, and of course to the retailer. I love this industry because I think we make an impact. Uh, just for example, like Cambodia, when I first went in there, they were just garment manufacturing ground. Today, you go to Cambodia, you actually see malls, you see shops, mm. beautiful hotels. So the industry actually is one of the frontier that allows uh, the country to get developed very quickly. Some people think that the fashion industry is only about production. Some people think that it's just fashion. But I see it as an industry by itself with technology, with manufacturing, with marketing, with digital marketing. So it's actually a very, very interesting industry. So why do you want to learn about the apparel and product development side of it? The reason is because it is an opportunity to learn how to identify markets and opportunities to create trendy products. Also, we actually have a lot of hands-on experiences, meaning that you'll actually be doing sewing, you'll be doing drawing, a lot of hands-on activities versus what you get from pretty much maybe traditional education where it's more theory based and all that. We have a mi good mix of both and of course acquire the know-how to actually test and modify the product for production. The main thing is about the aspect of production which we tend to focus on a lot more. Yeah. So I think when you take out the diploma classes, whether you are in fashion business or in apparel design, we cover nine common modules. Yeah. So one of the things that I think both modules cover is um, the textiles. textiles. Yes, textiles is very, very important. So I always tell students that to learn textiles in our industry is like if you want to be an English teacher and you have to learn your alphabets. That's, That's how basic yes. it is, yes. all right? That is going to be probably one of your highest costs when it comes to creating a garment. A yeah, huge 60 to 70 percent of the FOB, the cost, is on fabrics. It's on fabrics. Yeah. So you have to know uh, how your fabrics are made, what is the content of your fabric, where does it come from, how is it being grown or created in the lab, right? How to identify them, how they are being knitted or woven. So of course, analyze garment construction, really understand how garments are being made in the mass production aspect. The reason is obviously because there is a couture way of doing clothes, all right? But that is more refined and more expensive and time consuming. Obviously in our mass production way, because time is money, 
You want to make sure that you achieve it in a very efficient yet at a quality that is acceptable at the price yeah. that you're going to Doesn't mean for. that if you do mass production, the quality is less. Mm. Because even though the couture would have like a lot of hand finishing and all that, but some of the equipment that is used by mass production in terms of, uh, let's say for example, the belt pocket, mm. the whole automation is almost perfect mm. finishing. So I would say that the garment construction actually allows you to look into detail how to finish a seam, how to finish uh, what kind of stitch to use. Mm. And I really find that very, very important, especially, I mean, just for example, Uniqlo, it might be a mass-produced mm. brand, but if you look at the finishing, it's really good. So this particular module le really teaches you about the different kinds of steam and stitches. So as a designer, how you produce clothes is also the process of designing. How you want certain seams to be created and what kind of stitches you want, it is a process of designing as well and because it also, changes the look. Yeah, I also design a kind of quality into yeah. the product. Yeah. Then of course we move on as many of the designers are, are, or rather our students, many of them are budding entrepreneurs. So actually one of the things that we really talked about is to create and manage fashion brands. All right. So if you are in the process of creating your own brand or have thought about creating your own brand, how do you go about understanding your target market? How to really understand your unique uh, selling point? What's so special about the product that you're selling? And of course, uh, if you're part of the apparel product development uh, class, Drafting and sewing is a huge part of your life, all right? So we do have modules uh, like apparel pattern and sew tops, apparel pattern and sew bottom. So we broke it into two different modules because the way that it's constructed is actually quite different. As a designer, I also believe that drafting and sewing is part of design. I've gone to factories, I've seen block shoppers, block shop people, <laughs> when they send clothes to the factory and the sample maker will be, how do you want to do this? The, 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 the owner always say, I'm not too sure, you decide, you decide, you decide. <laughs> so what they're doing is actually relinquishing a lot of the design work because there are ways to create certain things that changes the look of a garment. Yeah. So if you do that, then you are letting go of that designing power to someone who may not know design. Also with drafting, we also talk about draping as well. So draping, again, we covered that because fabrics that we see in the market are actually knits. I'm sure many of you own knits, especially women uh, consumers because a lot of women, from what I know, is that they don't like to iron clothes, right? Uh, yeah. So when they see that it's iron, they don't want to really. So they tend to buy knits, which is more, you know, user-friendly. So with that, we really need to understand how fabric will drape. And now with certain brands like Zara, up to the market fashion brands, right? Draping elements and all that becomes an important element. So that's why we built this into our modules. Another important element is to really understand how fit how to fit your garment and what are the problems with fitting and how to do those alterations. So really looking at the variety of body shapes that obviously our students are in because you wear your own clothes, right, as your own model. So you really understand how to understand body morphologies, how to really see the fit that you want and how to make those changes. The next one we'll talk about is actually virtual fitting as well. So we talk about actual drafting and sewing, but actually now we're going to move on to something that is virtual. So in this particular course in TAFTC, we are actually using Clothe 3D. It's one of the uh, most innovative things we've seen in, the, in fashion for maybe about the past 10 years or so, right? So what you'll be learning is how to sew and fit a virtual garment, all right? So you'll be creating an on abata. On a virtual model. On a virtual model. So you'll be creating yeah. an abata and then um, how do you fit it and how to read those information of the fitting. Yep. Alright, it's actually quite an amazing software but having said that, obviously with new technology, it saves you on cost, it saves you on the need, it saves you time. The other one is draw digital image. So instead of drawing with the pen and paper, right now we can draw pictures using the CAD mm. software. So we are using the Adobe Illustrator together with uh, Photoshop, I believe. Yeah. And of course, for our product development module, the finale module will be the Develop Design Collection. You have to know about sourcing and you know fabrics and drafting and sewing and all that. And you tie everything together in a project. So now we're going to move on to the fashion business side of it. So Doreen will talk a little bit more about the fashion business modules. Okay, I'm going to talk about the diploma in fashion business. You talk about textiles, same mm. for merchandisers, you need to know textiles. We basically will go through this uh, interpret pattern draft, mm. which is actually sewing up a t-shirt and a shorts. The whole objective is not to ask you to sew up a nice t-shirt and shorts. The whole objective is for you to understand how a apparel production is being mm. done. This one is so important, manage quality assurance. Mm. I think most of the students find this most challenging topic 
because you don't you never look at fabric that way i work with united nations right so when i was, I, I talked to the uh, tech person and i said this fabric is uh, rejected he was like why is it rejected i said there you go you can't see the slabs there mm. and it's like where i was like to me it's so obvious but to the non-expert yeah. they will find it where is the slab? Yeah. So it really helps you to really scrutinize your material, your stitch, mm. your seam. We refer to this um, sub module, source for supplies and production. Uh, well, as any um, startup entrepreneur, you have to source for materials, you have to source for garment uh, manufacturers who, to produce your small quantities. Uh, however, in our program on source for supplies and production, we are looking at how to, not only where to source, but how to source, mm. how to evaluate suppliers that you think that can live with you uh, as you grow bigger and bigger, mm. all right? Not only looking at price, not looking at MOQ, which is minimum order quantity, not only looking at lead time, mm. but whether this supplier has the ability to produce good quality, uh, has the ability to be a partner with you, uh, we're also talking about not pricing, but rather uh, whether they give you any uh, credit terms and so forth, all right? So that's something that we will cover in, in this module called Source for Supplies and Production. And this module, my favourite, Calculate Cost of Materials and Apparel. This module is actually very well liked by many entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh, even garment factory owners will actually ask us about this because this module covers uh, standard allowed minutes or standard minute value. So it not only cover how to calculate fabric consumption and then how to calculate fabric cost, but it also teach you how to calculate labor cost mm. all right from the time it, uh, how much time is taken for cutting and for sewing and for packing so we really work down all the way to cost per minute mm. and it is how the industry works scientifically mm. uh, this is my favorite uh, managed sustainable fashion value chain i would say i think by now most of us know that fashion is actually the second most detrimental to environment mm. industry we produce a lot of waste even in dyeing, we produce our waste water. In the mm. uh, cutting process, we produce a lot of waste fabric. Uh, and then people buy and throw away fashion and that produces a lot of waste as well. Mm. Um, and if they don't sell the garments, it's a lot of waste. They might burn it. Especially yes. on brands, they actually burn it. I think yeah. now they are climbing down on that because that's also very wasteful and Highly bad wasteful. for the environment. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then we have all this e-fashion business related uh, courses so there's a course that teach you how to use Shopify to create an online e-commerce website uh, there's another course on social media marketing mm. um, teaching you how to use Facebook Google Ads uh, and then we have uh, inbound marketing which is uh, many people may, may or may not have heard it's called CRM a customer relationship management tool the most famous one of course you've got Salesforce and HubSpot but we start with a simple one like MailChimp, which is free. Mm -hmm. So that's something that uh, I think you can you can keep in touch with your existing customer with some kind of uh, marketing campaign tools such as MailChimp. Paid search engine optimization, SEM, is also very important where you can uh, put out paid Google ads and how do you manage that. Then you have SEO, search engine optimization, yes. where your website needs to be SEO optimized or rather search engine optimized so that people can find you. Yeah. And I think all these modules are just, I would say these are basics that you should know. I think one thing good about uh, being a TFTC graduate is that there's also another platform called the Label SG that our diploma graduates can go on board uh, because I know that to set up a website and to bring traffic to your site is going to be very difficult. One of the things that uh, we have worked very hard over the last two years uh, is on accreditation with other universities. Yep. Louise Clermont, who is our colleague in uh, France, mm. she will actually be able to give you more information about accreditation. Yeah, because many students always say that, so what happens after I graduate from FTC? So we do have a uh, work with other uh, institutions overseas where you can take your degree, degree program and other or something that's that kind of bring you further to where your dreams uh, will take you besides going to further education you can also um, work start your own label do many things yeah um, i think the fashion industry has an endless bountiless mm. opportunities it depends on how far yeah. you dare to bring I think there are many channels after graduating at FTC. Considering, like for example, for the label SG, you can web set up your brand. If you want to take your course further, you can do your accreditation. If you want to work for a company, we have the PCP program and yep. all that kind of stuff. Yep. So there are many channels of what you what your what you want your fashion future will be. Yeah. All right. And right now, I would say that 
uh, I'm seeing a lot renewed interest uh, of the fashion industry in Singapore because many of the big brands are coming to Singapore to set their regional HQ and I see that uh, there will be a lot more buzz going on so I feel that the future would be digital uh, because we don't have anything so let's make something out of nothing which is digitalization seriously so if doing this uh, particular diploma, these two, whether is it ADPD or apparel design and product development or fashion, or fashion, business. fashion business, so you can contact the salesperson, Meng Tian, to find out more about this module. So see you around, see thank ya. you. Thank you Doreen and Thomas for the insightful sharing. Do you guys know that the diploma is actually designed in such a way that it prepares our students for the industry? Yeah, from sewing to creating different types of garment, to learning how to manage your own fashion brand, these courses will lead you to create your own fashion collection. Speaking of a fashion collection, virtual prototyping is actually one of the courses being taught where our students learn to create virtual garments. So these virtual garments will actually be able to allow our students to participate in our annual virtual fashion competition. VFC last year was very eventful. There were a total of 187 participants and 10 of them walked the virtual runway during the finale. So VFC will be happening again this year, so stay tuned to what this year's competition will have in store for you. Before we move on to the next segment, if you have any questions, you can head to our Zoom room where one of our staff will answer your queries. The link is pinned in our chat below. So next we'll have Meng Tian, who will be sharing more about our apparel design and advanced certificate for our fashion business bundles. Hi, my name is Meng Tian. I'm a program advisor here in TAF DC, so I'm here to go through with you the upcoming intakes for our diploma and as well as the course uh, details for the diploma in apparel design. In TFTC, we focus on the outcome of our students' learning journey. So these are the industrial leading firms that I've been working with, Body Needs, Lido, Mako Taylor, Jin Lee, and also many other players. For individuals who are looking for a job in the fashion industry, and also meet career switchers who are interested to switch jobs into the fashion industry, we offer a program. It's called the Career Conversion Program. So some of you might be asking how this program works. So we have to go through a 1.5 months training program. And in this 1.5 training program, you will be taking part in a series of courses. So we have four different specialized bundles in fashion business, apparel design, bags design and footwear designs. And you will also be attached with the host company for on-job training for 10.5 months. So in this one year, you will be receiving up to 12 mentorship sessions for the very first year. For Thesis graduates, we will always pair you up with the host companies to go for three months internship programs in local and international fashion companies. So this will help our students to step into the industry with some learning experience before they start their full-time job. So for those of you who are wondering what kind of companies are currently hiring for internships, they are Lido, Olive Ankara, Yumi Active, and also VF Corporations. So just for information, VF Corporation owns Supreme and the North Face. So they are currently moved their office to Singapore. So there are plenty of opportunities out there for our graduates. We also do offer mentorship program for our graduates. So you can ask us to talk to any of the industrial experts and also start networking from there. All right, so this is actually a one-to-one -one mentorship program and uh, it's happening once a month, right? And together you can actually set your career goals um, and also talk about all the valuable guidance that you need to fulfill your fashion career goal. This is um, an opportunity that you can take along with the mentor's wealth and knowledge in this industry and resources. So we also have other subsidies and fundings available for our students. One of them is Skill Future Credit. And for Singaporeans, 25 year old and above, you actually indeed receive up to $1,000 Skill Future Credit in your account. You can also use your PSEA, post-secondary ed educational account, to pay for the course fee. So this scheme is actually for Singaporeans who are age 30 and below. And if you are an NTUC member, you should be able to receive up to $500 worth of UTEP funding. All right, so this how it works is all of the cost fee you have paid, um, you can claim up to 50% of the 
payable amount for our courses. And we also do offer installment scheme and this is available for all the Singaporeans and PR paying net fee above $5,000. So who can actually apply for our programs? These are the eligibility criteria for interested candidates. If you are a Singaporean or permanent resident and you have a GCE O-level with three credits including English and Mathematics or your WPRN result is level 5 and above, you can actually apply for our diploma program. So for international students, if you have a high school diploma equivalent to GCE O-level with three credits including English and Math or qualifications from professional institution may also be considered on a case-to-case -case basis. If you are not qualified on the birth, don't worry about it. You can actually take the WPRN test and if you score level 5 and above, you can actually apply for our diploma program. And for advanced certificate program, you just have to score level 4 and above. And here are the upcoming intakes for our apparel design program. So we do have two upcoming intakes and uh, one is starting on the 18th of April to 18th of August. So this four months program will be a full-time intake. The timing will be Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. We also do offer a part-time intake, which is starting on the 7th of May to the 22nd April of 2023. So this program is possibly about for 12 months and uh, this happens every Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. and weekend, Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And if you are interested in advanced certificate in the apparel design, this indeed is a weekend intake. So the program is 3.5 months and it's going to start on 9th of April to 24th of July. And the timing will be weekend, 8.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday. So why you should be enrolling today? It's because we are offering all the different perks during our open house. So one of them is we give reimbursement for all the qualification signups. So for diploma will be $192.60 and for advanced certificate will be $107. If you are interested in the short professional course, you will also be enjoying the $27.82 for application fee waiver. And for Diploma in Apparel Design, you will actually receive a sewing toolkit worth $55 and you will receive a tablet worth $315. Of course, this you have to finish your program first and it's yours to keep by end of the program. And you will also be receiving Adobe Illustrator license and um, the duration will be one year. So this program is worth $315. So we do encourage our students to set up your own business after your diploma program. So we also do offer ACRA reimbursement worth $150. Of course, as mentioned, reimbursement of application fee worth $192.60. And for our advanced in fashion business, you actually receive a Shopify subscription worth $78 and also our sourcing supplier list. And again, you'll receive a reimbursement of application fee of $107. So for all our apparel design diploma graduates, you'll receive $1,000 SkillsFuture Qualification Training Award. And do note that this is a cash award and it will only be valid till December 2020. So right now is a good chance for you to sign, sign up for this program and enjoy this cash award. So now, I'm going to talk about the course fee for our TEFTC's Diploma in Apparel Design and Product Development. For Singaporeans who are below 40 and all the PRs, you actually get to enjoy 70% SSG subsidy. So your final course fee for this program will be $7,143.84. For Singaporeans who are age 40 and above, you guys actually get to enjoy up to 90% subsidies and the cost fee will be $2,692.84. So for all the international students, your cost fee will be $23,812.85. For those who are interested in the Advanced Certificate in Apparel Design and Product Development, for Singaporeans below 40 and for all the PRs, you enjoy 70% subsidies. So your final payment will be $2,015 
and 87 cents. So for Singaporeans age 40 and above, you enjoy 90% subsidy. So your final cost fee will be $759.87. For all the international students, your cost fee will be $6,719.60. For those who are interested in our advanced certificate in fashion business, for Singaporeans below 40 and all the PRs, you get to enjoy 70% subsidies. So your payment will be $2,011.05. For Singaporean age 40 and above, you will enjoy 90% SSG subsidies. So your final payment will be $758.05. For international students, you will be paying $6,703.55. If you have further questions about our diploma programs, you can also contact us and our contact information are stated here. And hope you enjoy the rest of the open house and see you soon. Next, we will have Louise, our Senior International Business Development Executive, sharing with our overseas partner Kingston about our accreditation. And joining her will be Dr. Jake Abrams, Associate Professor and International Director. Hi there, Luis here um, from TFTC. Uh, as the International Business Development Senior Executive, I'm very, very, very pleased to introduce you to our super prestigious partner, Kingston University. So Kingston is about 30 minutes away from the center of London by train. It's located in the southern part of the Greater London, so it's south from uh, London city centre. And I've had the chance to visit the campus last November. And according to me, it's really the perfect place if you're looking for the bustle of the city life without all the hustle of a huge city such as London. It's located on the doorstep of the capital, and yet it's one of London's safest borough. And on top of that, the campus is located right next to a river. So it's really super beautiful. Today, we are live from Kingston with Mr. Jake Abrams, Associate Professor and International Director at Kingston School of Arts. Hi, Jake. Thanks for giving a Hello. bit of your time today and introduce Kingston and our collaboration to our students. Thank you very much for that. So, um, can you tell us a little bit more about our collaboration existing between TFTC and Kingston University? I think we're really excited about this uh, collaboration because actually, um, yeah, we, we've always had some of the really best students from around the world coming to study with us at Kingston. And that's what you, you lot are about. And so, um, yeah, we're excited that there will be a, a progression agreement between our two institutions. Yes, it's really good. Okay, um, can you let us know how long is the Bachelor in Fashion Promotion and Communication? Because my understanding is that our TFTC graduates in our nine months advanced diploma can directly enroll in year one of this bachelor. So can you tell us a little bit more about this bachelor degree? Yeah, quite often in, in the UK, you do a something called a foundation course, which is a, a, a one year of, of four years. But between our two institutions, you could go into uh, a three-year BA uh, at Kingston, and it's really intensive, and it's very full-on, very exciting, but very full-on. So yeah, it's a three-year three BA course. Okay, so our students can do the bachelor degree in three years instead of four. Absolutely, yes. Um, it, it, we'd still want to see your portfolio and make sure you're ready for it and, and the like, but, but that's the arrangement that we worked out and we think we're very confident that uh, you, you lot will be really good uh, entering our first year. Can you present a little bit more the campus and its facilities? So I said previously that it was amazing, but can you tell us a little bit more about it? I, 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 perhaps in my presentation coming up, I'll, I'll tell you a lot, lot more about it. But it, yeah, it, it's very, very special here at Kingston. We've invested heavily in our facilities. So we've got lovely studios and lovely facilities. And it's this yeah, famous art school in a, just a lovely part of London. But, but perhaps I'll talk more about that in a moment. Okay, no problem. Um, may I ask you, how many students do you have on the campus approximately? 
There are, yeah, quite a few, because there's lots of different subjects. We go from music to performance, to architecture, to art, to all sorts of design disciplines. And there are about 2,800 students in total. But of course, uh, programs in, in there are much, much more than that. And in, in fashion, do you know how many students do you have in the fashion section? Um, in um, in a year group, there are about 60 students uh, in, in, in the, the, the course that we're talking about. Uh, we, we don't like our courses to get too big because we really want to know our students and work very, very closely with them. And so we teach on a one to 25 basis. But um, yeah, yeah, 50 or 60 students is about right. OK, um, once finishing the program, what are the potential job opportunities for the students? Yeah, we, 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 Kingston's really known for it being a really experimental place, but also we, we're known for getting our students into the industry where people want to go into. So in fashion and fashion promotion and communications, um, our students will go into some of the top fashion houses, either Haute Couture or in the high street, um, and big names in the high street. They'll also go into marketing and promotion and exhibitions and uh, magazines and uh, social media companies that really deal with f fashion at, at, at its cutting edge. Yeah, we're really lucky with our, our links. And um, do your international students go back to their home once they finish their degree or do they remain in, in the UK? Um, really up to them, but actually we like to... Um, push a philosophy of internationalism with all our students. So it's much more exciting when you graduate to think of your career that you, you could work in America or in China or Japan or um, in Paris or Milan. We like our, our students to really think of themselves as interna international uh, people that, and, and they'll have the skills to work wherever they want to be. But yeah, it's most the fashion people industry is so global. Exactly. So global. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you want to show your presentation, maybe so that we can get a, an insight of the the program and the campus and everything that you're going to present. Yeah, I'd love to. So let me just turn it on. So. Let me see. Yeah, so I'm Jake from Kingston School of Art. And Kingston is one of those really, really famous ones in the UK. It, it's thought of as very, very highly. Um, and um, so Jake Abrams, Associate Professor. And um, yeah, let me take you through. So actually studying in London, it can be really, really good for your career because it's one of the capitals of the creative industries. And so it's an amazing place to see the museums and the galleries and the, the fantastic things on offer in London. And yeah, we, we are, um, as Louise was saying, we're in a very beautiful part of um, the capital. Um, and there are royal palaces and royal parks on either side of where we are. That's the center of Kingston with its famous art school in the center. And you see those big green spaces are royal parks. And so it's, it's a lo lovely place to actually live and study in. And this is the center of Kingston. There's a beautiful historic market square uh, where you can get just lovely uh, local food and uh, vegetables and breads. Um, but you're so close to this wonderful, um, the rest of London. So, and we encourage uh, our students to think of London as an extension to your studios. So um, yeah, going to the ballet, going to um, uh, uh, fi fine art events, museums, galleries can really stimulate your creativity. And yeah, you've got, um, I suppose, New York or London are where all these things happen and are really exciting for creative students to be. This is the Design Museum that we're the only um, university that has a course in conjunction with them. Um, we're also in conjunction with some of the top art galleries in London as well. So um, let me tell you more 
about what we do here. Um, yeah, Kingston is a top university in the UK for design and crafts 2021. 2022, we're the top fashion school in London. Um, and we're very proud of that. And we, um, we work hard and our students work hard. Being the best means that actually it's very full on here, but it's always exciting and it's always different. These are the league tables and there's Kingston right at the top there in fashion. Um, and yeah, there's a whole list of courses um, that, um, that you'll be working uh, next to at, at Kingston. So, so there are interior designers, uh, uh, dancers, uh, musicians, illustrators, graphic designers, and that mix makes it really, really exciting. And it means you can actually work with a load of different materials. And yeah, we really, even though you're a fashion student, we like you to really get involved with the wider art school and what's going on here. So they have access to different studios. For example, fashion students can go and, uh, and uh, try ceramics, for example, right? Absolutely. And it's one of the, I think a lot of places think of you, sorry, let me show my phone, that, that they like to think of you, you're a fashion student, you can only use certain facilities. At Kingston, we say no, they're all open to you. And it means that you are, um, yeah, you, you can try anything. And it means that you can push your fashion in all sorts of directions. Um, yeah, so yeah, your art can be really, really powerful. And um, and I'm, I'm saying art because I think fashion designers are really, really creative people. And I'm not showing the traditional uh, uh, fashion uh, images today. Um, you'll see so much of that on the internet, but I'm, I'm more talking about a philosophy of a place. Um, so the, yeah, these facilities are open to absolutely everyone and they're some of the top facilities in the UK so yeah why would a fashion designer use wood or metal or ceramics well why not all our facilities are open to every student and it means you can do your catwalks or shows in fantastic industry standard studios um, this is our one of uh, this is our main building, and one of our buildings has won the top bit of architecture in the UK for this year. Um, very hands-on. You can make your own printed materials, your own textiles, and it means that our fashion students and fashion promotion and communication students are really at the cutting edge. Um, yes, yeah, just a list of different materials you can use. And it's a very collaborative place. It's so exciting when fashion designers work with here, graphic designers that work with film, uh, film uh, filmmakers. Um, it's, some really special things can happen then. Um, and I'm showing off now, but yes, yeah, some of the really big names from all our dis uh, from, from all our disciplines have come through Kingston. So some of the big names in fine art. Some of the big names in architecture have come through Kingston. Some of the big names well, you know, um, in architecture, again, um, have come through Kingston. And here's Joey Yu that um, is using some amazing uh, fashion design, but she's also illustrating and animating as well. And that mix happened because of her education experience here at Kingston. Top product designers have come through Kingston. Top fashion designers, of course, have uh, some of the world's top fashion designers have studied here at Kingston. Okay. And yeah, we, um, uh, yeah, we work in the studio a lot, mostly directly, but we also have digital environments and digital studios for you to work in. So um, yeah, we're caring for our students in lots of different ways. And you all have your own personal tutor. You all, there are lots of people from industry working with you all the time. And there are lots of, because of our reputation, a lot of the top people in fashion business, fashion communication will come in and work with our students. 
Um, yeah, so new ways of working are essential. Ideas and experiment are essential. Some places almost forget this within fashion and fashion communication, but new, the ways forward into the future are what's, what's important. We want you to be the future creative leaders of fashion, fashion promotion and communication. And really to, to um, yeah, uh, it's that philosophy of, doing things differently, of turning things uh, upside down, established ways of working upside down, setting things afire. And I think uh, that sounds r ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's not. If you're going to be great at fashion or fashion promotion and com communication, you have to devise it in a very, very different way. Um, there's too much uh, universities that, that try and do exactly what's out there. There's no point whatsoever. So we, we've worked very, very hard to make our students independent thinkers, thinking beyond the syllabus. And I think that's outside all. of the box. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, and that's all I wanted to say. But um, yeah, I'm sure there's questions or uh, um, what have I missed? What else would you like to know? Um, I think you've covered pretty much uh, everything. I really like the fact that you are emphasizing on the mix of students. I really like that about Kingston, the fact that students from fashion can uh, directly interact with students from architecture, graphic design, um, ceramics, I was saying, and it's, it's really a melting pot, a mix of creative people working together to create something. So according to me, this is a very inspiring environment. And I've never seen that before in any other um, university, creative university. So Kingston is really special to me for that. Thank you so much, Jake, for this uh, very insightful presentation. And we really hope to either see you in Singapore or send our students to Kingston. Thank you so much. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. And whatever you decide, good luck in your future careers. Um, uh, yeah. And, and, and please pop into Kingston when you're next in London. OK, nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. OK, bye. Bye. Thank you, Louise and Jake, for sharing. The presentation was really dynamic, and I didn't know Prezi could let you do that on Zoom. Yep, something we can think about to use when we have class presentations next time. So next up, we have a sharing by Brenda McNaneman, the Director of Technical Services from VF Asia Product Supply. So let's welcome her. My name is Brenda McManaman. and um, I'm originally from, uh, from Ireland. Um, I've been living in Asia for 20 years now, um, almost 20 years. Um, and I've just recently moved to, um, to Singapore. I've been in Singapore since November of last year. Um, my role um, at VF is the Director of Technical Services. Um, which encompasses, I would say, two, two parts. One is technical design and the other is colour. So I've been in the industry about uh, 25 years um, and I've been at VF for about two and a half of those uh, 25. I started my career working in manufacturing um, and so I've, I worked in factories um, back in Ireland and, and the UK. And I lived then and worked in Sri Lanka for a number of years, um, also working in manufacturing. I then moved to Hong Kong and um, I worked in, um, in, a, in, a, in a buying sourcing office. Um, and I've been in that environment um, since working for um, multiple UK brands, um, also Australian brands, and now, um, and now with VF. I've looked after, um, I would say, not only apparel, but I've, um, I've worked with you know, accessories, with footwear, and also with um, home product over the, the tenure of my career. Okay, so, um, so VF is one of the world's largest um, apparel, footwear, um, and accessories companies. Um, it connects people to the lifestyles and activities um, that they love. Um, through a family of iconic um, outdoor active and, and workwear brands, some of which you um, are most probably that you would be familiar with. Um, you know, the North Face, we have Vans, we have Dickies, Timberland, Napa Peary, um, and then, you know, some of our equipment brands like um, you know, Eastpac and Kipling. Um, and that's, that's just to name, to name a few. 
Um, VF is a, is a, you know, a purpose-led, performance-driven um, organization. Um, it's committed to building and you know, maintaining a workplace that celebrates diversity. Um, so you know, it's one of the things that is really important to the company is really allowing you know, our associates to, to really be themselves and bring themselves you know, to work every day. Well, I would say my mornings usually start with, um, with I would say meetings with the US um, simply because of the, the time difference. So it usually works like that, that we, um, that, you know, most meetings with the US will be in the morning. Um, and then the afternoon is, is really spent then um, in, you know, working with the teams in Asia. So my team, I'm here in Singapore, but my team are located throughout Asia. So I have about 40 um, associates in my, in my team and they're located um, China, Taiwan, um, in Indonesia, in Vietnam, Cambodia. We also have um, Bangladesh, India. So, um, so yeah, lots of people in lots of different, um, different countries then to connect with um, in the afternoon. So we talk about, I mean, when we have meetings with the brands, it, um, we talk about, you know, operational, there will be operational things that we need to discuss. There will then also be um, projects that we're working on with the brands. So, um, you know, it might be a fit renewal project. Um, you know, we talk a lot about, um, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a lot on 3D product creation at the moment. Um, so that's, that's, you know, that's something that we, that we spend a lot of time um, discussing, I would say, and having, having meetings on. Um, other things are, you know, we're upgrading a lot of our systems, so system adoption um, as well, and, and, and that integration. Um, so there, yeah, so those tend to be, so generally, I would say now, more recently, would be the, um, the, the, the subjects that we would talk about. We also then have things where the teams would be involved with, you know, sketch review as well, you know, and, and tech pack briefing. Um, so, so that's depending on the, on the time of the year. I, I do think there definitely is um, there's some core elements I think that are captured within TV shows and the movies. Um, they're you know albeit they're 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 probably I would say slightly exaggerated, but yeah, there's definitely that um, there's definitely that passion. There's a real vein of passion um, and and just a real energy I would say within within the industry. And then also there is. Um, just that buzz that you get when, you know, when sales come through and people love your product. So, you know, and, and everyone celebrates that. So, so yeah, so I think there are, there are those core elements that definitely, um, I would say that definitely are, yeah, are, are, are captured well. So I, I studied textile technology and then I, my first job was as a management, I entered a graduate program um, for, on, on fabric technology. Um, which was which was very relevant to my to my degree and what I had studied. So I was able to apply a lot of what I had learned um, in what I did. Um, and and then after uh, when I moved then to Asia, I was given an opportunity then to um, I would say to grow laterally and um, and that really you know allowed me then to learn more around you know garment technology. And then you know I was supported by the company that I was working for. You know to go and um and you know want to train on patterns but also to spend time in um in, in in a sample room as well um in one of the factories that we that we were working with so um over the years i have spent a lot of time in factories a lot of time in fabric mills in laundries i would say printers all of those um those facilities and really you know very very lucky to have to have had that you know to be to be working and living in hong kong and to have that on your doorstep has, you know, really, I would say was really um, hugely beneficial um, for me and for, for my career. I think I would have to say it's, it's, um, it's the team. I, I think it's, you know, we've been through a massive change in the last year and just really seeing how my team have, first of all, come together um across all of the the regions like you know that, I, that i've already described that we operate in 
um, just really as a global team to, um, to make sure that what we needed to do, we got done. Um, and, and, and to just to be able to have given them the platform to showcase what they're capable of and to just watch them grow and develop. You know, um, at VF, it's, there's two things that are important. One is, you know, it's, it's not just what you do, but it's how you do it. So the behaviors um, of how you do things, how you treat others, how you approach things, how you collaborate, all of those things. So that is as important as the end result. So for me, it has been hugely rewarding watching, giving my team that, that platform and being able to give them that platform and, and seeing them grow and, and continuing to do that. I think that that, that part of the job I find is, is hugely rewarding. I would say in the scale of challenges, I think the most, most things, you know, most things you can overcome, okay, or you find a way to, you know, to, to get a result um, in terms of, you know, delivering it. You might think you're going to do it this way, but then you might have to divert and do it another way. And, and therefore being, adapting to that change takes, a, and being able to, to adapt quickly and not, um, it's mindset. I think it's mindset is what I'm trying to say is that, that the mindset is, you know, changing that mindset and influencing people, you know, to say, right, okay, I know we've spent, I know we've spent a number of weeks doing this, but actually now we, we need to do this. So, and then, you know, just people just understanding and adapting and taking it, accepting the change and, and the evolution and, um, and then moving forward with it. So I think that's a, you know, that's the biggest challenge, making sure that everybody is, is on board and just making sure that the mindset that we're, that we're cultivating the right mindset and, and encouraging people to but explaining to them, giving them context. So I think that's really important, but it is a challenge. It's a challenge. And um, I would say there are moments, yes, when it definitely is stressful, but I think, um, I think it's how you deal with it. Um, you know, and I think, you know, what I might find stressful and what somebody else might find stressful, maybe, you know, completely different. So, um, I would say that I have learned to deal with stress, you know, and le learned to manage it better than perhaps I would have. Cause I think, you know, in the last, in the last couple of years as well, I feel like I have developed um, as well, you know, as, as an individual and, and as a person. And therefore, I've got better at managing stress. And, you know, as I always say to my team, one day at a time, let's not, let's not get overwhelmed by, you know, the big piece, just this, you know, have the plan and make sure that we're, that we have our plan, that we have our backup, and then we, we, we tackle it one day at a time. And therefore, you know, that I think removes a lot of the, a lot of the stress. And I would say that, you know, a lot of, I guess, a lot of things that I've already talked about. So, you know, um, that the mindset piece and, and being open-minded, um, being open-minded for change um, and, and expecting change because, you know, things in, within the industry are changing at a very rapid pace. So, you know, you need to be ready for that evolution and, and you need to move with it because you need to stay relevant. So I would say, yes, open mind. And I would also say as well, just a good learning agility, because I think um, you know, the days of having learned your, learned your skill or your trade, and then that's it, you're in a job for life. I think that's no longer the case. So I do think that, you know, that, that ongoing learning and, um, and training and, 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 and developing and improving yourself, you know, whether that's a, you know, a portable skill or, or, or a technical skill, then, you know, it's both of those are important. So I would say be open to open to change, but also be open to having to continue that continual learning. Thanks, Brenda, for the insightful sharing. I'm sure all of us have picked up a thing or two about the industry. Remember, if you have any questions, do head to our Zoom rooms where our staff will attend to you. The link is pinned to our chat box below. So before we go for a break, we will have Sui walk you through our enrollment process. And we'll see you later. Hi, 
Welcome to the quick guide on how to use our new shopping cart function. With this new function, you'll be able to enroll for multiple courses at once, and this will be especially useful if you would like to sign up for our course bundles during our upcoming open house. To start, go to taftc.org and at the top right corner, you'll be able to see a shopping cart button. Click it to access the shopping cart. Once in, you'll be able to see all the courses that you can add to your cart. Do note, however, that you'll need to log into your student account before you start adding courses to your cart. You can choose to either sign up if you're new or log in if you're an existing student in TAF TC. Once logged in, you can start adding courses to your cart by clicking Add to Cart or removing them by clicking Remove from Cart. You'll notice that you'll not be able to add to cart for courses that are already ongoing, courses that you have done before, or courses that are full already. You can also search for specific courses in the search bar if you're finding a particular course to enroll for. Let's add some courses to our cart. To view your cart, click on the purple button, View Cart, to see what has been added already. You'll be able to see all the courses added, the details like the dates of the course, and the cost to pay. You can also choose to remove any course from your cart by clicking the Remove button. For the open house, you can enter the special open house promo code by typing it here. The code is OHMAR2022 and then click Apply. You'll then be able to enjoy waivers on your application fees for all your courses. Do note that you have to do it individually for each course. Once done, you can click on Pay with Cart to enroll for your courses that you have added into your cart. You just need to enter your cart details and click Pay. If you would prefer to sign up for a bundle through our student portal, you can do so too. Just log in and click onto the shopping cart tab in the menu bar, and you'll be able to add courses into your cart, just like on the TAFTC website. Do note that both websites are linked, so if you logged out from the student portal, you'll be logged out from the main website as well. And if you add a course to your cart from your student portal, it will be reflected on the TAFTC website as well. We hope this video helped you better understand our new shopping cart function. If you need any other help, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Welcome to the video on how to enroll in courses at TAFTC. To start, visit taftc.org. You may browse all programs by clicking into this button. You can also search for specific courses in the search bar if you're looking for a particular course. Click into the course you're interested in, and you'll be able to view the course information, such as course duration, objectives, and requirements. After reading through the details, click Enroll Now to view course schedules. Once you've made up your mind, click this button to register. When this box shows up, click Self-Sponsored if you're not sponsored by a company. You'll then be led to this page for application details. Here, click No if you're a new student. After that, click this button to proceed. Next, you will be required to enter your personal details, such as name, date of birth, address, and contact information. Once done, click Next. Here, you'll need to select your highest qualification, then your employment details. Next, let us know if you're being sponsored by your company. Please also let us know how you heard about us. On this page, you'll be required to fill up the mandatory section. Before submitting your application, please read through our policies and terms and conditions. Next, confirm your course details and click this button to review application and proceed to payment. This page summarizes your application. Please check your personal details, course information, as well as your payment details. If you're using SkillsFuture credits, the amount you need to claim will be shown here. 
before submitting your application, you can enter the special open house promo code OHMAR2022 in all caps. You'll then be able to enjoy waivers of your application fee. Lastly, make your payment if applicable and your registration is completed. Let us know if you encounter any other problems. Thank you. Welcome to the guide on how to claim your SkillsFuture credit for the courses you enrolled for. Your claim should be submitted before class starts. To start, go to myskillsfuture.sg, click Login, and then SingPass. You may scan the QR code to log in or log in on SingPass Mobile. Please note that simultaneous logins are not allowed. Once logged in, click Claim Skills Future Credits under Digital Services. When you see this page, click Proceed to Submit a Claim. Next, you'll need to select the course you enrolled for. You may search for the course by inputting the course name here. Click into the course you enrolled for and then select the course run. Input the fee payable by you and the corresponding amount to be claimed. Next, upload the official receipt issued by TAFTC. Once done, read the terms and conditions and review your application. Lastly, click Submit. If you encounter any problems, feel free to reach